Now we will discuss the next type of corpuscle that is WBC. WBC or white blood corpuscles. White blood corpuscles. They are also known as leukocytes or leukocytes. They are without any pigment and that is why we are calling them white. So there is no respiratory pigment like hemoglobin. Now if you talk about their number and size first, the size is much bigger as compared to RBCs. We saw the size of RBC, it was about 7 to 8 microns and in case of WBC, the size varies from about 8 to 20 microns. So they are bigger as compared to RBCs. Then coming to number, number wise they are much less as compared to RBCs. RBC number was 4.5 to 5 million per cubic millimeter. Here the number varies from 6,000 to 10,000 per cubic millimeter. And that is much, much less as compared to RBC. So if we compare the ratio of RBC and WBC, RBC would be about 600 approximately to the WBC, 1 WBC. The ratio is going to be 600 to 1. So this gives us an idea that the number of RBCs is much more as compared to that of WBC. When we talk about the shape of WBCs, they are either rounded or slightly irregular. Round or irregular. They are nucleated. That means WBCs, when they are mature, they have nucleus. If you are able to recall, in RBC we said, young RBC, immature RBCs have nucleus and other organelles. But when RBCs mature, they lose the nucleus as well as other organelles and that is why we call them enucleated. Whereas WBCs are nucleated all throughout their life. And in different types of WBCs, the nuclear shape is also different. So here we will write that the shape of nucleus is different in different types of WBCs. And that is why these WBCs or leukocytes are known as polymorphonuclear leukocytes. They are called poly for many. Morph is for the shape or the structure and nuclear is for the nucleus. So WBCs have different shapes of or forms of nuclei and that is why they are known as polymorphonuclear leukocytes. The abbreviations which we use for this is poly, P, morpho, N and L. It is one abbreviation. Sometimes we find the abbreviation as P for poly, morphonuclear is only with M and leukocyte. One more abbreviation which we see is polymorpho nuclear and leukocytes. So there are these common abbreviations which are used whenever we are talking of the term polymorphonuclear leukocytes. And this means that different types of WBCs, they have different forms of nuclei. So there is a variation in the nuclear form. Now, lifespan. In case of WBC, the lifespan is very short. It is few days, three to four days, as compared to RBCs, 
whose lifespan is 120 days. So this is some basic information. Let us take few more interesting important points. When are these WBCs produced? So site of production. They are produced at multiple places like red bone marrow, lymph nodes, that is the lymphoid tissue, spleen. So these are the places where WBCs are, are synthesized and the process by which WBCs are formed. So here we are talking of the process, process of formation is known as leukocytosis. Here uh, WBCs are formed, so their formation is leukocytosis. If the number and this number which we have written here, this number is known as TLC, TLC, that is total leukocyte count. And this number we have seen varies from 6000 to 10,000 per cubic millimeter. Many a times here whenever we use the term TLC, an average number is given. So the average of this is 7000 per cubic millimeter. This is the average count which we take. Now when we are talking of uh, formation of WBCs, if the total leukocyte count increases, so here we are writing increase in TLC. If this number increases beyond this range, then that condition is known as Leuco, leukocytosis. That means increase in TLC is called leukocytosis. Oh, sorry, we need to change this. This is leukopoiesis. So process of formation is known as leukopoiesis and increase in TLC is known as leukocytosis. This condition, that means rise in TLC, takes place during infections. For example, during uh, appendicitis or any kind of infection, this number increases. So this is during infections. And the second category is if there is fall in the leukocyte count. So if there is decrease in TLC. That then that condition is known as leukopenia. So there are three conditions or three terms which we have to remember. Process of formation is known as leukopoiesis. And these organs where this WBCs are synthesized are called leukopoietic organs. And processes leukopoiesis. TLC, that is total leukocyte count, increases during infection or infectious condition. That condition is known as leukocytosis, increase in TLC. Decrease or fall in total leukocyte count is known as leukopenia. So these are three important terms which we have to remember about WBCs. Few more things about WBC is one special property which is shown by WBC is known as diapediasis. This actually means that WBCs they have very flexible membrane and can squeeze out through capillaries. So it is a property shown by WBC that they can. squeeze out of capillaries and that is when they come into the tissues and fight with the infection. So here we have seen 
various points about WBC. We have seen the size, uh, sorry, shape, uh, the number, uh, sorry, size, number, shapes, and they are also nucleated. Because of having different shapes of the nuclei in different types of WBCs, they are also known as polymorphonuclear leukocytes. And we have seen various kinds of abbreviations which are used. Then site of production, the process of production, if there is increase in TLC or decrease in TLC. And this is one more important thing that is diapediasis, squeezing out of WBCs through the capillary wall. Now, one more uh, thing that WBCs are classified into two categories. So let us see that classification now. Let us now see the brief classification of WBCs. WBCs are classified into two categories and this is on the basis of the type of cytoplasm that they have. They are called granulocytes when their cytoplasm has granules. So here we can write that they have granular cytoplasm. And the second category is a granulocytes. And as the name tells us, the cytoplasm is clear without any granules. Cytoplasm is without granules. And these granules, they are of different substances in different types of cells. First, let us classify them further and then we will see what exactly is present. Granulocytes are again classified into three categories on the basis of the stain which these granules take. So here we will write this classification is on the basis of stain taken by the granules. So if the granules take acidic stain, they would be called acidophils. If they take basic stain, then they would be called basophils. And if they get stained by both acidic as well as basic stain, then they would be called neutrophils. So let us write what, why we gave these names. They get stained by acidic stain and the most common acidic stain is eosin. And that is why acidophils are also known as eosinophils. The reason why this name is given to them is because the most common stain that we use is eosin. Basophils get stained by basic stain and neutrophils they get stained by both that is acidic as well as basic as well as basic stain. So these are the three granulocytes and depending upon which stain these granules take, we have given them the names acidophils, basophils and neutrophils. In different types of granulocytes, the granules, they contain different things. For example, in basophils, the granules contain histamine kind of substances. So depending upon that, they are capable of taking different states and they are called granulocytes. A granulocytes, they are classified into two categories and they are lymphocytes and monocytes. Both of these, they have clear cytoplasm without any granule. Lymphocytes, they are of two types which are known as B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes both are associated with cell mediated immune system 
as well as B lymphocytes help in production of antibodies. And the next category is monocyte. So there are three granulocytes and two agranulocytes. So total WBC types, if we have to sum up, they are five types, three granulocytes and two agranulocytes. In the next segment, we will compare these five types of WBCs, granulo as well as agranulocytes in a tabular form so that we are able to compare them at a glance.